Have you ever wanted to know more about a specific genre of music, say Celtic or Irish guitar, for example? Well, one of the best places to start is to find inspirational players that play that style of music. And that's exactly what's gonna happen on today's Acoustic Tuesday show. We'll be looking at 10 inspirational Celtic guitar players. Hey, TAC family, happy early St. Patrick's Day and welcome to episode 178 of the Acoustic Tuesday show. This show is all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. Speaking of, have you ever wondered if playing guitar 10 minutes a day would truly make a difference in your guitar journey? Well, today you're gonna to be meeting TAC member Bob M, who's gonna share his 10 minute rule experience with you. You'll meet Bob here in a moment, plus you're gonna get your weekly dose of acoustic guitar news you can use, which includes a historic Guitar Geek landmark that may be in jeopardy, a guitar geek that holds a Guinness Book of World Record, a guitar geek that holds a record in the Guinness Book of World Records, plus a whole bunch more. But first, let's go ahead and dive into 10 must-hear Celtic guitarists. I am super excited to share this list of 10 must-hear Celtic guitarists with you. I've learned a ton about Celtic and Irish music over the last couple of weeks, and I know that there is so much more to learn. But most of all, I just wanna share my enthusiasm with you because I've discovered 10 artists that are truly mind-blowing. And since it's the day before St. Patrick's Day, I thought it was rather timely that we do this episode right here, right now. So let's go ahead and dig into the list. First up on my list is a guitarist I had heard of, but playing with a guitarist I hadn't heard of. This is Tony McManus and Julia Toespern, Julia Toespern, playing a duet together. This is a demo for Greenfield Guitars. So not only are you gonna hear two amazing artists, you're gonna hear them play two amazing guitars. And I gotta tell you, the intricate melodies here are, again, mind-blowing. Let's have a listen. The next guitarist on the list has incredible rhythmic technique, an amazing voice, and this awesome knack for filling musical space. And you'll see here, this is John Doyle playing the song Clear the Way. Take a look at this instrumental break because I think it's truly inspirational. To face there, a young rebel he charged me in the fray. I turned around and my blade went through him. I did the devil's work that day. This next guitarist on my list has a name that I'm gonna wrestle pronouncing uh, Michael O'Domnail. Hopefully I said that correctly. The reason I included him on this list is for his delicate finger picking and his truly amazing, dare I say, angelic voice. There's something about Celtic music, Irish music, that I'm always drawn to the voices. And I think this is a shining example of the reason why I'm drawn to the voices. So here is Michael O'Domnail playing the song As I Roved Out. Speaking of voices, next on the list is Dick Goggin. Not only does he have an amazing voice, he's an incredible guitar picker as well. Check him out. We're the first ones to starve. We're the first ones to die. We're the first ones in line for that pie in the sky. In finding these artists, it's become very clear to me that bluegrass flat picking and traditional Irish and Celtic flat picking are very similar, but I feel like Celtic and Irish flat picking has this little extra zing, this little extra spice, and it happens more in the rhythmic department. I think the technique is, is quite similar, but Celtic and Irish music has these wonderful rhythms and these, these interesting, almost counter melodies that happen when two players are playing together. 
And here's a great example. I wanna introduce you to Artie McGlynn. And here he is playing with another artist that I'm gonna be mentioning a little bit later. Now onto the softer, more delicate side of the spectrum. This is William Coulter. And when I first found this video, I was blown away by two things. Number one, his masterful control of dynamics. Number two, the tone of his guitar. What guitar is he playing? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's a Santa Cruz OM with yes, Brazilian rosewood back and sides. You gotta check out his playing, but make sure to listen to the guitar. It's, it's awesome. I had no idea that modern percussive fingerstyle had made its way into Celtic music until I found this next artist. This is Soig Sibril, and let's go ahead and listen to and watch him play so you can see what I mean. From what I gather so far, a big part of Celtic guitar is playing rhythm, because oftentimes you're backing up a lead instrument, like a violin, or in this case, an accordion. I'd like to introduce you to Ian Carr, and what I want you to notice about his guitar playing is how incredibly solid of a rhythm player he is, the way that he supports the song, the way that he uses bass notes to emphasize chord changes, and his chord voicing selection. He's a very, very interesting rhythm guitar player to listen to, and I think you'll agree with me after checking this out. I've got two more Celtic guitars for you to listen to, and this next one is one of the originals, one of the trailblazers. This is Paul Brady, and he's singing the song Arthur McBride. What originally drew me to the song was Paul's voice and the song itself. But when I stuck around and listened to the whole song, I was blown away by his flat picking skills. Let's have a listen. And a soldier, he always is decent and clean in the finest of clothes. Constantly seen while of a poor fellow who dirty and mean, and so on thin grew in the morning. The last Celtic guitarist on my list that you need to hear is about to give you a rhythm guitar masterclass on a nylon string guitar. This is Tim Eady, and I think you'll see what I mean when you check out this video clip. Have a look. You know, when I first had the idea for the show, I thought to myself, can I even come up with 10 Celtic guitarists? And then the more and more research that I did, the more and more artists that I found, I actually had a hard time trimming it to 10 artists. In fact, if you notice, there were actually 11 included on my list because the first was a twofer, Tony McManus and Julia Tospern. 
Now, this is where you come in, because I know for a fact that I missed some profound Celtic guitarists. So in the comments below, let me know who I missed. I would absolutely love for this particular show, the comments section for this show, to serve as a resource for any guitar geek looking to learn more about Celtic guitarists. Next, I wanna talk about the question that I get asked time and time again. Tony, is 10 minutes of guitar playing every day really gonna make me any better? 10 minutes just doesn't seem like enough time to get better at anything. Well, actually, rather than me answer the question, I'm gonna to defer to TAC member Bob M. Bob M has a huge win to share, and it actually involves the 10 minute rule. Here's what Bob has to say. My small win is that I have gotten my head around the fact that some days playing is easy and good, and some days not so much. I don't get frustrated as much anymore as tomorrow is another day and I'll get more and more of those good days. My big win is that since Boxing Day, the day after Christmas in Canada, I practiced and occasionally played with others all but two days. I normally play nearly one hour, but if something came up, I'd make sure I did at least 10 minutes. And therein lies the power of the 10 minute rule. Because there's nothing that says you can't go beyond 10 minutes. Here Bob is saying, you know what, I've committed to playing every day and I'm gonna get in at least 10 minutes. And his commitment to 10 minutes has led to an hour of playing most days, which is why the 10 minute rule works. If you sit down to practice and you only do it for 10 minutes, you can give yourself a high five and say, cool, I got my 10 minutes in. I did what I set out to do. If you go beyond 10 minutes, not only did you do what you set out to do, you gave yourself some bonus guitar time. So yes, absolutely, 10 minutes of guitar playing daily will absolutely make you a better guitar player. And Bob M is proof of that. Now let's go ahead and shift gears and check out a guitar snow from one of our very own Guitar Geek family members. This is Dan Lichty from Bloomington Normal, Illinois, and here's what's in his guitar snow. First, he actually has a message for us. He says this, this is dedicated to demonstrating that given quality cannons, your array does not need to be large in number. Now here's what's in his guitar snow right to left. A Rose Allegheny Custom by Todd Rose of Ithaca, New York, an HD28 Custom by Sam Skinner of North Carolina, a Thomas Maple Orchestra model by Tom Neal of Bloomington, Illinois, a Gibson 180 Special made in Montana in the year 2006, and that was bought for playing at his mom's funeral, and it gained a permanent spot in his guitar snow. He's holding a 1989 A5 mandolin by violin maker James Haynes with artwork on the back by Northwest Coast Native American artist Scott Douglas. He also wants Tony to see what his beard might look like 30 years from now. Well, first off, Dan, thanks for sharing your guitar snow with us. Second, I don't know if I'm going to have a beard 30 years from now because my son Emerson, every time I hold him, I, I hand him off to Whitney and he's got like a handful of my beard hair. So if he keeps pulling on my beard at the rate that he's currently pulling on it, I might not even have a beard in two months because Emerson's gonna hand pluck every single hair out of my face. I know that's a little bit of a detour, but I thought that was something I needed to share with all of you. Uh, again, thanks so much, Dan, for sharing your guitar snow. And if you're sitting at home thinking, I have a guitar snow to share, I wanna be featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show, all you have to do is follow three simple steps. Step number one, go to AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite guitar snow shirt. Step number two, put that shirt on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. Step number three, upload that picture you just took at AcousticLife.tv. Once you're there, click on the submit link in the top menu and you can upload your picture and tell your story just like Dan did. I was going back through some past Acoustic Tuesday shows and I thought to myself, you know, there are so many amazing comments left on every single show. I should really dig back in the archives and dig up some cool comments. So I did that very thing. So while these comments aren't from a specific Acoustic Tuesday show, it's an amalgamation of comments left in the last month or so. Our first one comes from Chris Johnson and he says this, if you haven't yet, would love to see an episode dedicated to Towns Van Zant. Love the content, by the way. Well, Chris, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for suggesting that. In fact, speaking of my son Emerson, his middle name is Towns because I'm a huge Towns Van Zant fan. And I think your recommendation for an episode based on Towns Van Zant is one that I will strongly, strongly consider. Uh, in fact, I can't believe that hasn't crossed my mind before, but now that it's on my radar, I think you may very well see one in the coming months. Our next comment comes from Joseph Timmons, and he says this, 
I would look at Rosie at Turnstone Guitars in the UK. She has more distribution this year of pre-made guitars, but is still a handmade shop at the core. She has a lot of tone wood, many English that are very different from the usual, such as yew and bog oak. You should take a look. Indeed, I should take a look. I don't know much about Turnstone Guitars, but something in my brain says Turnstone Guitars, Rosie and Daisy of Tempest Guitars actually share a shop. I don't know if I'm remembering that correctly or not, but I will indeed check out Turnstone Guitars. Our next comment comes from Jim Ross, and he left this on the Acoustic Tuesday that talked about tonal experiments. Jim says this, First off, great show as always. Being a TAC member keeps me motivated. I have a Republic Resonator guitar that I originally bought to try to learn the Dobro. When we ordered it, I had the choice of having it set up with high action for slide or medium-ish so I could play it like a regular guitar. I opted for medium. Big mistake. The action was too high to play for more than a few minutes and bar chords were out of the question and too low for slide. Thanks to this Acoustic Tuesday episode, I discovered the Grover Nut Extender and it arrived today. Of course, I had to install it right away and it is the perfect solution for my application. Now I can head down the Dobro path with an instrument that will actually work for that purpose. It will likely sound like someone dropped a cat in a blender for a while, but hey, from here, from here on, any change is an improvement, right? Uh, that's an awesome, uh, awesome comment, Jim. I almost said question. That's an awesome comment, and I have never heard the cat in a blender analogy, but Jim, if I may ask your permission, I'll, I'll probably use that from here on out. Uh, so thanks again for watching, Jim, and thank you for leaving that comment. Our next, uh, our next comment comes from Mike and Margie Rogers, and this was left on the Jerry Garcia episode, and they leave this comment. Jerry, quote, the Grateful Dead are like black licorice. Not everyone likes it, but those who do love it. Best Dead song, Eyes of the World, English Town, 1977. Such amazing guitar work and tone. They checked all the boxes with that comment. They, they named their favorite song and performance, and they left an incredible quote. And I just, as soon as I saw this comment, I thought to myself, I'm one of those people that didn't like black licorice when I was a kid, but now... I love black licorice. In fact, there's, I want to say there's this brand, Panda, Panda Black Licorice. Anyways, I know that that's not music related at all, but I wanted to share that. So for those of you who like black licorice, make sure to check out the Panda brand, uh, Black Licorice. The show is brought to you by Panda Black Licorice. I'm just kidding. It's really not, but I thought that was a great place to insert a, a commercial, uh, off the cuff, improvised commercial. Anyways, one more comment to share with you. This is from Nick Spitzley. He says, hey, Tony, you've really inspired me to find my folkier side. Is that a word? Anyway, great content. Well, Nick, thanks for watching, and I'm so glad that you're getting in touch with your folk side. Um, now, this is coming from somebody who grew up listening to heavy metal music, who still listens to heavy metal music, but certainly am in touch with my folky side. So I hope I hope that's in your future as well. And it sounds like it certainly is. All in all, thank you everyone for leaving comments on the show. It's always great to kind of get to know you through the comments and ultimately it leads to some pretty amazing discussion. So thanks again for watching and thank you for the comments. The time has come for acoustic guitar news you can use. Yes, it is my responsibility to keep you in the know when it comes to the acoustic guitar industry and other awesome musical happenings. So let's go ahead and dig in. First up is a guitar geek landmark that, in my opinion, is in jeopardy. Yes, indeed, the old Gibson factory in Kalamazoo is going to be turned into a hotel. Check out this news article. I'm gonna go ahead and read it, and I wanna know your opinion in the comments below. The Gibson Guitar Manufacturing site in downtown Kalamazoo will be redeveloped into a new hotel property under plans that will retain the smokestack and bear the Hard Rock Hotel name. Hard Rock Hotels and its partners announced the plans Monday, March 1st, 2021, in a written statement on the project. With an anticipated completion date of fall 2023, the reverb by Hard Rock Kalamazoo at 225 Parsons Street would include a body rock fitness gym, a bar, brewery and restaurant, banquet facility, auditorium, museum, and the signing room, where many historic artists signed contracts with Gibson. What I want to know from you is, what do you think of this hotel thing? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're typing, let me share with you some of my opinions. At first, I was aghast because... The Kalamazoo Gibson factory was a place of innovation. It was a place where truly remarkable guitars were manufactured. 
And I saw it as a guitar geek historical landmark. And to hear that, oh, it's just gonna become a hotel, I just, I, it, it really got my hackles up. But then I thought about it some more and I thought to myself, I'm pretty sure it sat vacant since the 80s when Gibson left. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure that it sat vacant for at least maybe, maybe the last 10 years. So then I thought, you know, what better way to breathe life into a guitar geek landmark than to make a music themed hotel out of it. Now it sounds like they're gonna retain some of those iconic structures like the smokestack, and it sounds like it's gonna be kind of a Gibson themed hotel. So I'm actually kind of excited about it because I think when live music starts happening again and people start traveling again, it will become a destination for music lovers and guitar geeks. So I guess my verdict is that I'm excited and I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Our next piece of news is loosely related to Gibson. If you're not familiar, Ren Ferguson used to work for Gibson here in Montana. He helped set up the shop. He did a ton of custom work for them. Then he went to work for Guild. Then he went to work for Cordoba. Now he's back in Montana and he's making guitars with his son, Tim. Yes, Ren Ferguson and Tim Ferguson have just started their own guitar shop, Ferguson Guitars, where they're making incredible instruments. And while I have not had a chance to go to the shop yet, my friends at Music Villa have, and they documented the entire process. In fact, they're in the process of specking out seven Ferguson guitars for their custom showroom. But they're not done yet, but Paul went to check on those guitars, and here's a quick snippet of that video. I've just built what I want to build, things that I love. Yeah. And that's what we started with, and that was a great way Tim, for the past 20 years, he used to do all the custom inlay outside the shop for yeah. Gibson. Yeah. Did all of the plugging the pearl into the boards for us. Yeah. Back when we were doing, you know, 25 a month, yeah. you know, big, big production. And although he became a Lutheran in his own right and built ukuleles yeah. out in California after we built the Guild Factory together, we decided to get together a year ago in uh, July. Yeah. And, uh, we started building tools and fixtures, and so I wanted him to go through the same experience I did and do everything the hard way. I am super excited to see how those guitars turn out, and I'm even more excited to hear how they sound. Now, moving on down the news line here, our next piece of news comes from Julian Baker. Now, that name might ring a bell because long ago on the Acoustic Tuesday show, I introduced you to Julian Baker by way of the acoustic trio, Boy Genius, which includes Phoebe Bridgers, Lucy Dacus, and yes, Julian Baker. Well, Julian just released a new album entitled Little Oblivions. It was released on February 26, 2021, and I have not stopped listening to it, quite simply. It's an amazing album. No, it's not purely acoustic, but since I discovered Julian through the acoustic guitar, I thought I could include it on the show. And I gotta tell you, if you hear this album, you will not be disappointed. Last up on my list, actually, I've got two more pieces on my list, but they are very much related. Have you heard the name Alan Gogol before? Goggle, Gogol, G-O-G-O-L-L? -L? I'll, I'll go with Gogol. Have you heard that name before? Well, you, sh you should know him because he's a Guinness Book of World Record. He's a Guinness World Record holder when it comes to the guitar and when it comes to playing harmonics on the guitar. In 2017, he set the record for 1,000 harmonics played in 90 seconds. Here's a quick little video of that. Now that was back in 2017. Does that record hold? I believe he still is the record holder, but just for fun, he wanted to figure out how it would sound if you played 10,000 harmonics, which he completed in, I think, 14 minutes and 53 seconds. And just a couple weeks ago, he released this video, and it was just for fun, but holy smokes, what incredible technique. It kind of sounds like rain if you lived in like a, like a fairy land with like fairies and, and magic unicorns and things of that nature. Talk about commitment and precision. Hats off to you, Alan, for being a world record holder for 1,000 harmonics in 90 seconds, and then saying, you know what, just for laughs, let's do 10,000 harmonics. Uh, so cool, and such a treat for you to share that with all of us guitar geeks. And on that note, or notes, 
I love how that pun always seems to work. Uh, I think on that note, we'll go ahead and wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show today. Uh, but first, let's take a sneak peek into next week to see what we'll be chatting about. Next week, I'm gonna be talking about going live. Whether you're playing virtually or playing at an open mic, I'm gonna share with you the best way to prepare so that you can handle anything that gets thrown your way. Yes, that's happening next week on Acoustic Tuesday. And remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, your guitar success, your guitar progress, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So invest the time in your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thanks again for joining me today. Cheers to you, Guitar Geeks Unite, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Mm -hmm.